one girl has been returned 13 times after being adopted. Today I found out why. Her name's Bonnie. No one knows where Bonnie came from. They found her in the back seat of a car that had been in an accident. The driver appeared to have suddenly swerved and ran into a tree. He died instantly. However, when the driver was id, he didn't have children that age. The girl wasn't one of his relatives and she was found in a worn out car seat that had the name Bonnie scrolled on it in black crayon. As much as it urged me to say this, she was the perfect case for an easy adoption. Blue eyes, blonde hair, six months old and perfectly healthy. Exactly the kind of child that anyone would want. It's no surprise to me that a lovely young couple brought her into their home within a week, but not even three weeks later, and Bonnie was sent right back into the system with no explanation other than she's a handful. I did some digging and it does seem that the perfect Johnson couple were not nearly so perfect. A well check revealed that the garbage can was filled to the brim with wine bottles, and Mr. Johnson had been fired from his workplace for embezzlement. The next couple seems to be an even better fit. The Morrisons. They'd already adopted three-year-old Lily the year prior and they were excited to grow their family again. Mrs. Morrison was a teacher. Mr. Morrison was an accountant. Lily was a happy, healthy girl. Well, she was. Immediately after Bonnie joined the perfect family, Lily was diagnosed with leukemia. This was out of nowhere. It worked fast. Before the year was out, the family had shrunk and the Morrison family had to buy a coffin that should never have to be made so small. Everything fell apart after this. Mrs. Morrison started having an affair with one of her students. Mr. Morrison came home to them in bed, and in a rage, he shot them both. The teenage boy didn't survive, but Mrs. Morrison did. Although she'd never be able to walk again during the trial, it came out that Mrs. Morrison felt like she was no longer in control of her actions. She claimed she was sleepwalking when she seduced her student and brought him into her bed. Funny part is, Mr. Morrison said he had no idea where he even got that gun. He didn't own one, and it wasn't registered to him either. Obviously little Bonnie had to be sent back into the system while her parents were sent to prison. I wish I could say it got easier for her from here, but it didn't. Not at all. It got worse even. Not every house was as perfect as the Morrisons could have been. There are so many parents out there that are in it for the paycheck and frankly they got what they deserve. When Bonnie entered their house, I was on the computer all night to see the path of destruction that laid in Bonnie's wake. House fires, unexpected deaths, some explained, some not illness, erratic and violent behavior. The most saintly of people became depraved maniacs devolving into deviants that sold their kids to shit goes and downloaded terabytes upon terabytes of bad stuff. Big brothers began getting cats and big sisters were found with their wrists slit in the bathtub. Parents threw children out the window on the second floor. Jobs were lost, homes destroyed, and the only thing in common with each and everyone was Bonnie. The last house probably had it the worst. The Raiders. This poor couple hadn't a damn clue what they were getting into. When they adopted Bonnie, they'd already adopted three other problem children who came from abusive past, so they probably thought that Bonnie would be nothing new, nothing unexpected. Mr. Raider went into work last week and murdered every one of his co-workers with a shotgun. No one was spared and it ended only when he turned the gun on himself. The only survivor had managed to hide herself in the closet, and she said that he didn't say a word until everyone else was dead. Then she heard him start to scream uncontrollably. The screaming grew louder and louder until it was cut off by the final shot. I can't say the rest of the family had it easy. On the same day Mrs. Raider drowned the youngest child in the bathtub while the older children ran down the streets naked and wailing. They finally managed to flag down a neighbor and told her, and I quote, Mom's going crazy, she's going to murder us all just because of Bonnie. When the police finally got home, Mrs. Raider had hung herself off the shower rod while Bonnie was busy drawing flowers in the basement. It was like she didn't even know what was going on upstairs. I've seen a lot of children, many who might be concerned with problems, but Bonnie takes the cake. This child is a jinx in human form, and I have no idea why. So this is why I've agreed to foster Bonnie. I cannot let this child go into another home knowing what I do now. Bonnie is one of the most beautiful children I've ever seen. Dark golden pearls. And those wide eyes are such a bright blue. They make the sky seem drab. She's quiet, always says please and thank you. And I've yet to see any typical troublemaking behavior. Stealing, hoarding, lying, destroying. I questioned her about all her previous homes, how her entire life she's never spent more than seven months in a house. At the time, we were enjoying dinner, and Bonnie looked up from her mac and cheese to ask for some applesauce. When I poured her some applesauce in a bowl, she took it. And then she started talking. I'm a very bad thing. I can't do good things no matter how hard I try, and everyone around me gets hurt because of it. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better this time. I pity this child. I don't know if I trust her, but I do pity her. I began to feel uneasy after she said that, so I sat down only to realize my chest hit the table when I sat down. Well, something in my chest. I don't remember doing this, but it looks like the butt end of my kitchen knife is in my chest and I'm holding it.